Hello everybody. My name is Dr. Resham Khanna. Today I will be presenting a short video on breast imaging case. Hope you all find this video informative. A 48-year-old woman came with history of brownish discharge from left nipple since 1 week. She had no family history of breast diseases. On palpation there was no lump felt. Ultrasound examination revealed a dilated duct measuring 5 mm in diameter showing a 12 into 8 into 5 mm sized heterogeneously hypoechoic mass within. On color doppler mode a vascular stalk is seen. Based on these findings a diagnosis of intraductal papilloma was made. Mammography images appeared unremarkable. Ultrasound guided sampling was done for this patient. She underwent surgery with wide excision of the lump. Her histopathology report revealed radial scar, complex sclerosing lesion along with papillomas. Intraductal papillomas are the most common masses within the milk ducts of the breast. They are benign tumors but may contain areas of atypia or carcinoma. The most common symptom is nipple discharge. They occur commonly during 40 to 50 years of age. Clinical presentation: patients may be often asymptomatic or present with nipple discharge if it is specially unilateral, spontaneous, and persistent. Papillomas are proliferative tumors originating from the walls of milk ducts, typically growing within the duct and tending to cause local ductal obstruction. The central question in assessment of breast papilloma is whether there is any evidence of cellular atypia. Any findings suggestive of more than merely benign proliferation are generally grounds for surgical excision of the entire lesion. In addition, papillomas have been reported occurring adjacent to other significant lesions such as atypical ductal hyperplasia or DCIS. Papillomas may be solitary or multiple. Multiple papilloma especially more than 5 are considered papillomatosis there may be a higher rate of associated malignancy with multiple papillomas they may be central or peripheral mammograms are frequently normal with small intraductal papillomas when imaging findings are present they include a circumscribed benign appearing mass often subareolar in location a cluster of calcifications Galactography usually reveals a filling defect or other ductal abnormalities such as ectasia, obstruction or irregularity. However, these findings are non-specific. Breast ultrasound: papilloma may be seen as a well-defined solid nodule or intraductal mass which may either fill a duct or be partially outlined by fluid either within a duct or by forming a cyst. Color Doppler will demonstrate a vascular stalk. A dilated duct can be frequently visible sonographically. MRI: These lesions most commonly appear as T2 bright circumscribed solid enhancing lesions. Morphological characteristics may be quite variable. They may be oval, round or irregular in shape, have smooth or irregular margins. They may be solid, cystic or complex cystic. T1 the lesion usually appears iso intense to slightly hypo intense relative to the breast glandular tissue on T2 hyper intense to the glandular tissue but less bright than cysts post contrast rapid early enhancement absolute enhancement rate may be somewhat less than DCIS it may show a homogeneous or heterogeneous pattern of enhancement or a peripheral rim like enhancement on delayed images diffusion weighted images it shows restricted diffusion high dwi and low adc values the differential includes other solid tumors that can occur in large ducts specifically dcis invasive ductal carcinoma with an in situ component Papillary carcinoma of the breast can mimic intraductal papilloma particularly on ultrasound. For ultrasound appearances also consider inspissated secretions within a dilated duct but they have no associated vascularity. Complex breast abscess with debris will show a solid component and fat necrosis will show no doppler vascularity.
Most centers treat solitary intradductal papillomas with surgical excision even after benign biopsy to exclude components of atypia or neoplasia. Given the increased risk of malignancy over a woman's lifetime when this lesion is diagnosed, compliance with screening recommendations for such patients are strongly advisable. Women with this lesion have a relative risk of 1.5 to 2 times for developing invasive breast carcinoma in their lifetime. Thank you.